Hello and welcome. My name is Raj Basord and I'm a consultant psychiatrist working in private practice in Harley Street. I'm joined today by Dr. Jack Edmonds, who's a general practitioner working in private practice in Harley Street. Jack, many people will have heard of uh, private practice and they will be aware of the fact they could go and see a consultant orthopedic surgeon or many other kinds of specialists privately. They might be quite surprised to hear they could go and see a general practitioner privately. Tell us how private general practice works. Well, most GPs have contracts with the National Health Service, but some of us don't work for the NHS at all and therefore we have to generate our income elsewhere and this is what private practice is about. When, patient, when patients come to see me, they have to pay a fee for my time and my expertise as well. Why would someone consider going to see a GP privately as opposed to staying with or consulting with an NHS GP? Well, I think the big advantage of going to see a private general practitioner is the fact that you have exclusive time with that doctor and it's, it's got no limit to it. So providing you are um, able to afford the fee, you can have as much time as you want with that doctor. Also, these days in the National Health Service, there are no such things as personal doctors with personal lists. These seem to have gone uh, many years ago. Now, in, in private practice, you get to see the same doctor over and over again, and you don't see anybody else unless you wish to see somebody else. So you are in command very much of what is going on in your consultations, and, and the uh, choice of doctor is entirely yours. When a patient comes to see you, give us some sense of how long the average consultation is and in comparison with if they went to see an NHS GP. Well, I always, I always give people 30 minutes. However, if somebody wanted to be fitted in, had something quick that needed to be doing, I might give them 15 minutes. And if there was a complex issue going on, then I might give them at least 45 minutes to an hour. So that's 30 minutes is my standard time. In the National Health Service, I believe the standard timing is between 10 and 15 minutes. Um, and it doesn't matter uh, what is going on, that's all you get, 10 to 15 minutes. So there's greater flexibility, perhaps, and maybe more time. What about access to someone like you? Is it easier to make an appointment for someone to see someone like you? Well, I get the impression that it is. Um, my, some of the patients that come to see us are actually refugees from the National Health Service, shall, shall we say. And they've been trying to make appointments to see their doctors on an acute basis and have been told that they can't be seen for 10 days or 14 days, something like that. When they want to come and see me, they simply ring up and they'll be given an appointment probably within the next 24 hours and certainly the same day if there's an emergency. So it's much quicker to come and see us. We are much more accessible. And within your own practice, my understanding is you are a single-handed GP. Do you mm -hmm. think there's some advantages to the fact that after a while you must develop a relationship with the patient and they know they're just seeing you and no one else within the practice? Well, Raj, you've just hit the nail on the head. The reason why people come to see private doctors is, is to form that personal relationship between themselves and their doctor. And the unfettered time and the quick access makes that much, much, much uh, easier. And getting to see the patients over and over again, we get to know our patients extremely well. Even when the notes are not open in front of us, uh, we, we can remember quite a lot about our patients. We're not, but our patients are not anonymous to us at all. They are close people that have come to see us many times over the years. My staff know them, I know them. Uh, it's a very, very uh, unique situation. If someone is thinking about coming to see you privately or any other private GP, does that mean they have to give up their NHS GP or could they have both, an NHS GP and a private GP and how, how would that work in practice? They can certainly have both and in fact we often um, encourage people to have both for various reasons which we might go into later. Um, but uh, I often uh, offer to write to or communicate with National Health Service GPs after people have been to see me because it's important that doctors who are often doing the prescribing um, know, know what's going on and also continuity of care is very important and I think if a, if a doctor is consulting a patient in Harley Street then the doctor back home needs to know what's going on, very important. There are lots of drugs that you can get on prescription in the NHS for a nominal charge, um, which would cost you a lot of money if you wanted to get them on prescription privately. Are you able to liaise with uh, NHS GPs to, to help patients get treatments that you might be recommending, but they can go and get it on the NHS? Well, I, I think medicine's about communication and communication with the patient, but also communication with, with colleagues. So the answer to the question is yes, definitely you can go and get your prescriptions in the National Health Service. There's a little caveat there because often NHS GPs are less willing 
to follow the lead of a doctor in Harley Street simply because they haven't done the consultation and taken the responsibility, etc. Having said that, a good letter from me to the NHS GP should really sort out that problem. And in, in essence, I have, I have rarely, never actually, uh, come across patients who can't get the medicines that I think they should have on the National Health Service. They may not be exactly the same medicines, but they'll be in the same sort of uh, uh, proportion and from the same class of medications. If a patient is thinking of coming to see you privately, they may be thinking, oh, my NHS GP will be really affronted or upset. It'll, it'll communicate a message that I'm really unhappy with them uh, if I went to see someone like Dr. Jack Edmonds. Is that what happens in practice? In practice, it does sometimes, I'm afraid. There are some doctors in the NHS that have a sort of religious taboo when it comes to seeing private doctors. Um, and there are some private doctors who uh, take the stance that they and only they are going to be looking after their patients. I personally think that's a wrong thing to do. After all, at the end of the day, the patient is the client, the patient is the one that needs the doctors, and it doesn't matter whether the doctors come from the National Health Service or from the private land, so long as we're all pulling together to help in the care and treatment of that patient, then there shouldn't be a problem. However, there are sometimes problems when GPs in the National Health Service learn about private consultations um, and um, sadly that this is this does happen but it's not usually a, something that we can't overcome. Do you have to be really very wealthy to have a private GP like yourself? Are all your patients on your list incredibly wealthy people? No they're not. Um, I think there are two reasons for that. One is that actually our fees are not outrageous. They're probably less than some women would spend on an afternoon in the, in the hairdressers or uh, buying clothes, for instance. Or that gentlemen would spend if they went to their club to have dinner with a friend. And the other reason why it's not always out of, out of context for the people coming to see me are that, of course, general practice in the private market is a little bit different from general practice in the National Health Service. We are not just family practitioners that deal with the day-to-day -day things, we tend to be consulting general practitioners, i.e. people come to us with special problems uh, and therefore there are, there are more complexities, shall we say, in those consultations. The other reason is that in private practice uh, we often do what's, what I would loosely describe as company medicine or insurance medicine at the same time as doing um, uh, general practice. And those patients are often sent to us by other parties, third parties, um, uh, for whom we are doing a job uh, and they're not paying the bill themselves. But the bottom line is that I do not think that um, private general practice is the, is the reserve only of the super wealthy. Is it possible to give us some sense of the cost? I mean, is a consultation with you for half an hour going to cost me hundreds and hundreds of pounds? Well, my half hour fee is £150. It's, uh, it's in the public domain. You can look up my website and it's there. Nearly all private practitioners, GPs, um, have a list of their fees for the various things that they do. And they're, they're open to the public to have a look at them. Um, the vari there is a variation. Um, the Independent Doctors' Federation have information from our members about the uh, charging uh, lists, etc. And it varies from something like £100 for a, for a consultation to something like £300 for a consultation. It's mostly time-based and it's also based on what um, goes on both in the consultation and after the consultation. So, for instance, if I write a report, I was charged for the report. If we do blood tests, or other, arrange other uh, difficult uh, examinations and tests, then they cost more also. And if we're writing to third parties or, or uh, making referral letters, they also cost more. What are your thoughts about if someone's undecided and they're thinking about coming to see you, how should they go about it? Should they call up your practice, have a chat with your practice secretary, maybe have an initial consultation to get a sense of whether it's right for them? Absolutely. I mean, we, we encourage everybody to come and have a look at our practice, meet the staff and, and meet me for free. Um, for about 10 to 15 minutes, just to sit down and chat and find out whether they're going to get on with me and whether I'm going to get on with them and indeed whether their medical problem is appropriate for my skill base. Uh, we always encourage people to do that. But of course a lot of patients come to us because of reputation and, and recommendation from their friends. And if your friend says you must go and see Dr Jack, that's a very powerful message and it's a way round the, the, uh, the worry about whether you're going to see the right person or not. Dr. Jack Edmonds, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Raj.